Hello again, it's nice to see that you've returned. For more art adventures, we're gonna have fun and do some art with culture too. Cause every day is special. That's right, my amazing, amazing grade threes and fours up there at OPK. It's me, Lance Cardinal. Always so happy to be here with you. Amazing kids doing some art and having a good time together. I'm so glad to see your smiling faces and I'm so proud to be in your good graces. Yes, that's right. I'm always so proud to tell everyone that I am a member of the Fixed Stone Cree Nation in Treaty 8 territory up there in Wabiska. And I know that you guys are proud to be a part of that nation as well. It's so, so great. All right, you guys. So the first thing we always do every time you see each other is say hello in Cree. And the way we say hello in Cree is... Tansi. That's right. We always say Tansi when we see each other. So today's no exception. And I want to hear you nice and loud on the count of three. Say Tansi. Are you ready? Piak, Nisa, Ninsta, Tansi. <laughs> That's right, you guys. That's so, so awesome. I love, love saying that with you because our language is so important. And I really hope that you're doing your best to keep the language strong and to practice, practice, practice everything you're taught by the indigenous people there at your school, the Cree and cultural program. They're trying to teach you an amazing amount of language and those are important to hold on to and to talk Cree at home. Ask your Kukum, Muslim, whoever you know and always talk Cree as much as possible. That's just the way to be. All right, you guys, now it's time for us to learn about the Cree word of the day. That's right, and of course the Cree word of the day also talks about what our craft is gonna be for the day. And today's Cree word is dreams. That's right, dreams is today's Cree word, and the way we say dreams in Cree is Boatamona. Boatamona. That's right, so on the count of three, I want to hear all you out there say Boatamona, which is dreams in Cree. Are you ready? Piak, Nisa, Nista, Boatamona. That's right, good job you guys. And that means dreams in Cree, and that brings us to today's amazing craft project. And the project for today is, and of course, it has to do with dreams. Can anyone guess? <laughs> Here it is. That's right, this is a paper plate dream catcher. So, so cool. Something we're gonna make together as a team. And look at this beautiful webbing in the middle, paper plates painted, some nice feathers on the bottom. So, so cool. And we're gonna make this together as a team. Now we need to have our regular assistant hold our project up so we can see it while we work. Let's see, oh, but you know what? Because today's project is so tall, I had to get two assistants. <laughs> so now these assistants are super, super tall. Holding on, there we go. And he's gonna hold our project for us. Put that right here and hold it for us, please. There we go, oh. <laughs> he's trying his best and that's all we can ask. Hold it up high. Let's see. Maybe you can put on the string, just like this. Oh, hey, there we go. Right on the string. There we go, and now our assistant can hold it for us. You can see the feathers are hanging down. They're made of paper and string and paper plates. So there we go. We're gonna make a paper plate dream catcher. So much fun. Okay, the first thing we have to do, of course, as always, is get all of our supplies together. And the first thing we're gonna need, of course, is a paper plate. Um, and today we're going to be using styrofoam plates because this is all I have right now. You can use paper plate, styrofoam plate, whatever plate you have. Um, you can even just use a piece of cardboard that's shaped like a circle. It doesn't have to be a plate at all. It can be something like this shape. We're also going to need um, three colors of paper. Let's see here. Where's my paper? Oh, <laughs> hold on a second. I got to grab it. <laughs> here it is. Of course, <laughs> I, almost, I almost forgot to bring these with me. Three colors of paper on this size of paper would be great. So today I'm choosing yellow, orange, and red as my three colors. Also, we're gonna need some string. 
Now I'm choosing a red string today because, you know, it matches the color of my paper, but you can use whatever kind of string you want. Yarn, string, pipe cleaner, anything you have. So these things that I always show you guys, they're just guidelines. You don't have to use them. You can use whatever you want to make the craft work, okay? We're also gonna be painting today, which is important. So we gotta get together our painting supplies. Now today you can see there's a theme going on. Um, I'm using red, yellow, and orange paint. And I've already distributed onto my plate a little blob of each paint, just like that, ready to go. Now teachers, you can get that done ahead of time if you want, or you can do it, let the students do it themselves, it's up to you. And of course, because we are painting, we know very well we have to have our, I'm gonna move our assistant to the other side so I can keep my paint stuff over here. Ooh, there we go, great. And we have water for painting as well. And make sure today, if you are painting, you wear something that you can cover up your clothes with or wear clothes you don't mind getting dirty because, you know, paint gets everywhere. We're also gonna need some paint brushes as well, of course. So we have paint and paint brushes ready to go. All right, let's begin. Okay, we're also gonna need, of course, oh, I forgot, scissors. <laughs> as well as some, um, oh, glue. Now, of course, as always, I'm gonna be using a glue gun because I'm older and I'm able to use this, but it's very, very hot. So you can use whatever kind of glue you have in your school, white glue, uh, glue stick, whatever works best, um, but it might not be as fast as what I'm doing today, but I'm just showing you an example of the project so you can watch and then you can stop the video and do it all yourself afterwards. It's up to you. I think that's all the supplies we need for today. So perfect, here we go, let's begin. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is cut a hole in our plate. So here we can see a regular plate. We're gonna cut a hole right down the middle. Now these are a little bit difficult to cut, but do your best to cut a nice round circle. Obviously it's something I'm having trouble with today. <laughs> you know what? Two plates? <laughs> that's why I was having so much trouble. I <laughs> only need one plate. Oh, that's silly. All right, here we go. Much easier. But hey, you know what I always say? Cut two together at the same time, it saves you trouble. I just cut two plates at the same time. I could now do two dream catchers, but that's for another time. You can see there, a little bit rough. I'm gonna clean that little edge off because I like things to look really, really great. But again, don't worry too much about how it looks. It's gonna look exactly how you need it to look. It's up to you. No pressure at all. All right. Now we're gonna paint our plate. That's the next step. So we get paper on the table or whatever the desk is, should have it covered with paper or newspaper or something we can throw away so we don't get paint all over our desk, all right? So we're gonna bring our paint forward. And I have three colors I've chosen, like I said before, and we're gonna use them to make our craft. So first thing I'm gonna use is a nice big brush to cover the majority of this dream catcher. And I think the color I'm gonna use for that is yellow. Now yellow is an easy color to paint on. It goes on quickly and also it's easier to show other colors on top of that, right? So let's go. I love to paint. I love to paint and do some crafts with you. And I love to talk about my dreams. I bet you have fun dreaming too. Yes, you know what, you guys? Dream catchers are so great because they help us have a very positive mind to be free of negative thoughts, bad dreams. And you know what? That's always a good thing because when we go to bed at night, we wanna make sure that we have a good sleep and dream well so when we wake up, we're in a good mood and we're in a positive state of mind. All right, here we go. Whoa, look at that, so nice and bright. Perfect. Now, as you know, I like to take shortcuts. I'm gonna use my hair dryer uh, to dry my plate so it goes a little bit faster, we can keep going. Now, if you don't have a hair dryer with you, you just gotta wait a little while while the paint dries. No big deal, there's lots to do.
Here we go. And that's it. <laughs> Easy as pie. And now we have our paint is much, mostly dry, which is all we need for right now. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is add another color on top. And for this one, we're gonna put away our big brush. So I'm gonna clean that off. Now remember, we put our water, our brush into the water till it runs clean, right? We go on the paper towel. Oh, still a little bit of yellow. So I rinse it again. There we go. Nice and clean, perfect. We have to get all the paint off those brushes as fast as we can, because if it dries on the brush, the brush is ruined forever. And we don't wanna waste things, right? Things cost money. All right, let's try some orange. And I'm gonna do, just like that one, I'm gonna do some stripes all along, just here and there. Always think orange and red and yellow go well together because they're the colors of fire. And I love watching a fire. I'm sure you guys do too up there in Wabaska having a fire with your family, sitting around the fire and, and talking and laughing and maybe doing marshmallows. Ah, just love that. The best part about living up north where you're from is you get to have so many fun times, make such fun memories outside. You're very, very lucky to be living in Wabaska. Now we're done all that, let's blow dry. Oh, I gotta rinse my brush. Oh, we gotta rinse the brush. <laughs> Not quite clean yet. Try that again. Uh, perfect. All right, now let's blow dry this level of uh, layer of paint. We'll be right back. All right, there we go. Good enough for now. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect, as long as it's dry enough to put our next layer on. So there we go, we see we have now orange and red, uh, yellow. Now the last color is red, my favorite color of all. I just love the color red. It's so bright and vibrant and just, it just I just love it. So I'm gonna take my red, I'm gonna do dots here and all around. Now you don't have to do dots if you don't want to. That's just my choice for what I want to do for my dream catcher. But again, you can do whatever you want. You can do other shapes. You can do a ring around this way, whatever colors you want, definitely up to you. But today I'm doing red and orange and yellow. And those are my colors. Or maybe you want to choose blue and green and purple, totally up to you. All right, our paint is all, brushes are all clean. We're done with our painting for now. Let's blow dry this so we can move on to the next step. There we go, all dry, ready to go. Check it out. Looks so good. <laughs> I love it so much, my favorite color. So now we can remove all of our painting supplies if we want to, okay. Okay, and our water can go away. It's always good to clean up your messes as you go along so nobody has to clean up after you and it keeps our workspace nice and tidy. Even at home if you're doing crafts or working with paint, always clean up after yourself so your mom or dad or anyone you know that you're living with doesn't have to pick up after you. It's not a very nice thing to do. Always clean up after yourself. All right, here we go. Ready. Next step we're going to do is, let's see, ah, we're going to need some feathers. So as you can see here, we have our webbing and also some feathers. So we're going to start making those now. Let's start with the web. And I think my web is going to be red. So we take our paper 
just like this here, and we cut 10 little strips. Now they can be whatever thickness you want, whatever you're comfortable doing, just cut some strips as carefully as you can, as straight as you can. Here we go. Piak. Nisa. Ninsta. Now don't forget, you could also use string if you want um, to make these as well. You don't have to use paper for your webbing. You could use yarn or string or whatever you want or fabric. Um, again, you know, keep your mind open about these crafts. These aren't necessarily exactly how you have to do it. If you have a better idea or a different idea than what I have, tell your teacher about it and maybe she'll, he or she will let you do that as well, right? So now we got, let's see, two, four, six, okay. Eight, nine, ten. All right, now I have ten pieces of paper that are gonna be the strings on my dream catch. So let's count them together. Are you ready? First in English, then in Cree. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Amazing! Now, let's do it in Cree. Here we go. Piak, Nisa, Ninsta, Niwa, Nianen, Ktasik, Tipigop, Hainanyu, Kigach Matatat, and Matatat. That's right, 10 pieces of string. Well, they're paper cut to look like string. <laughs> We're making all those pieces right back there, so those are important. Let's put those to the side. And now we're gonna glue those to the back of our dream catcher. So here we have our dream catcher frame ready to go. We're gonna glue onto the back, all right? So here we go. Now again, I'm using a glue gun. It's much, much faster, but you can use whatever you have available to you and that works as well. So I'm gonna glue the actual plate. You can do the same thing with your glue and put it on just like that. I'm kind of bending it at the same time so it stays kind of flat. There we go, just like that. Glued on the back, looks like that from the front. Pretty cool, so now we're gonna do that nine more times. Now the trick of this, <laughs> if you're using glue, glue gun, the trick is not to get the glue threads everywhere, blah, uh, but the trick of it, as you can see here, is not to go down the middle. It'll look like a big star, we don't want that. We want your papers to go in every direction, whatever way you want, but not down the middle to crisscross. You want to crisscross everywhere, okay? Don't think too much about it. Just go with the flow, feel it out, and that's, that'll be the right way. Whew, so many times I burn my fingers on this glue. That's why I always say to you guys, if you are using a glue gun to please be careful, especially if you're at home, and uh, make sure you have an adult with you if you're using a glue gun in case you get hurt or in case you need their help, okay? It's really important. And like I said before, I'm not thinking too much about it. I'm just putting it randomly wherever I think would look cool. And so far, that's where I'm at. So as you can see, I'm not doing right down the center. I'm doing them everywhere, every which way. And that's important to make it look like a web and not just like a star, okay? Now you can do more than 10 if you want in terms of how many pieces you put on. 10 is just a number that I chose for today and it seems to work well to fill up the space inside the plate. But you can do 100 pieces if you're willing to. But you know, like I said before, you could also use string. So if you are gonna use string, you do the same thing. Cut the piece of string, put it over where you want it and then glue it in place. So, so simple. Unless you're using glue gun, then it can be complicated and a little bit a little bit sticky and a lot of owie. <laughs> so just be careful. I have a few more strings here. Now what you want to keep doing is, as you go, look at where there's space, okay? You can see through here, there's space right here and here. So I'm going to put a piece, I think, right over there, you know what I mean? To sort of fill those areas up. Should fill up nice and full. Woo! 
There we go. Three more left to go. I'm gonna fill up the bottom right here. Looks like it needs a spot right about there. Now you know another option you can do as well, if you don't want to use the paper kind of web, is to cut holes, small holes, or poke small holes through your plate all the way around, and then use yarn or string and go back and forth randomly, just like tying your shoes, whatever way, and make the same kind of look. There's lots of different ways. Use your imagination and skies are the limit. All right, woo, we're almost there. Just one more left. I'm gonna put that one right there, I think. Great. Yes, and there we go. My web is done, as well as my glue gun web, which is all over the place. Let's ignore those glue gun strings for now. But what we don't want to ignore are these pieces sticking out. See that there? I'm going to go to the back, cut all those extra pieces off that are sticking out. We don't want those. It should look like that when you're done, okay? There's the back, and here is the front. Oh, it looks so good. I absolutely love it. I hope yours looks good too. I'm sure it's perfect, just like you. As always, creative and amazing. Okay. That is all done. Okay, perfect. We're gonna put this to the side, and our next step we're gonna do is to make feathers. Now, of course you know we have the three colors I've chosen for feathers. Now, we don't have to draw them out, but you can. But you know what, I think you kids are old enough, you can just cut them and go from there, okay? So let's start cutting. If we take our red, I'm gonna do one, and two. I want them to be fairly big, like, you know, about that big, right? You don't have to make five or six, whatever you want. I'm going to do five feathers, okay? I'm going to do one yellow. Oh, boink. And I'm going to do two in orange. Now they don't have to be thick, they can be long and skinny like this one, like that. Whatever size you want them to be, whatever shape, it's up to you. There's no wrong or right, it's all up to you. There we go. All right, so put the paper aside. All done with these. Perfect. Now I have five feathers ready to go. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Now the next thing you have to do for these feathers is to fold them in half to make that kind of creased look you can see here, right? So the feathers here are folded to make them look a bit more feathery. So take our feather and we fold it right in half. And then we open it back up a little bit. Fold it. And open it up. And do that for all five feathers. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it sort of looks like a fold, that's all that matters. Great. Now we have five all folded. Next up we have to do is cut little lines in the feathers. You can see here I have cut little wedges. And that makes it look a bit more feathery, so we do that next. Just a couple per feather. Doesn't have to be much, just like that. And make sure they go in one direction. You don't want the feather um, wedges you're cutting to go in different directions. It should all be facing sort of the downward motion. Sometimes you can even do three wedges if you want. Like this one, three wedges as opposed to two. It's up to you. But the wedges really give it that, that sort of feathery look. That was a little bit rough, but perfect. I love when things aren't perfect and they're a little bit off because that makes them unique and different, just like me. Oh, I think I cut my finger. <laughs> okay, so we have five feathers all finished. Set aside all of our scrap paper. Wanted to keep our work area nice and clean. And there we go. 
Look at that. Five feathers. I think that's how I'm going to put them on my dream catcher as well. Is yellow in the center and the two reds on the sides and the orange ones in the middle there. Perfect. Now, next step we're going to do is attaching the feathers to our plate with string. Okay, so we have our feather, our plate here ready to go. First, we'll attach all of our feathers. So I'm gonna put them all facing the right way, downward like this. You can see they're all wedged downward, okay? Like that. We get our string, and we're gonna cut out what, however many pieces we need, about that long. <laughs> and five of those. One, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. There we go. Now there's lots of different ways you can attach your feather to your string. You could pierce a little hole at the end and you can tie it through. You can get some tape. You can tape it on the back and hold it in place. I'm gonna glue it today because I have a glue gun and it'll go quite quickly and that way it'll be finished faster. But again, glue gunning is a little bit more difficult. There we go, we have one all strung up. And there we go, feather, perfect. Then will do that five more times. Now these dream catchers are so cool. They're gonna look so nice hanging in your classroom, but you know what? They're also gonna look nice hanging at your house. Don't forget, these can be a really, really great present for Christmas time. If you, can, uh, if you can hold off that long, it'd be a really cool present to give to your mom or dad or someone you know and care about. Maybe your kokum or your musum. Maybe they can put it up in their room and help them protect their dreams. Always have to do what we can to help other people out and be ready to help someone who needs our help, protect our elders and watch over them. They're our knowledge keepers and very important people in our community. We have to make sure to always treat them well with respect and honor them as well. So again, we put a little bit of glue on the top here and we're almost done gluing all of our feathers together. And there they are, all five feathers are glued with a string ready to go and that is perfect. Yes, okay. Now, next step, putting it on our dream catcher. So that's gonna be just as easy as before. So we put our dream catcher in the front and we're gonna add them one by one. All right, so here's the back of our dream catcher. We're gonna make this the bottom, okay? So we add strings one at a time. And like I said before, I think I'm gonna do yellow in the middle. So right about there. We decide where we want it and we put a little bit of glue and we attach our string. Now, it doesn't have to be a certain length, Whatever length you think is right, that's what you do. Okay, and there we go. First string done. And we got a little bit of hang out there, so we gotta take that off, right? So zoink, just like that. Perfect, our first feather looks so good. Now we're gonna do this four more times, okay? Now the red ones, we're gonna do next, I think, on the sides there. One side and the other. Ooh. Perfect. And there we go. And then we have our little strings hanging off. We cut those pieces off. Just like that. Now don't forget that you can also tape. It'll be much easier to tape it on. There we go. And we have two more to add. One here. Another one on the other side. You can see here I have my orange ones hanging a little bit high. You want to make sure they kind of balance. So you want to make sure you know 
If the orange one on one side is high, it's gonna be high on the other side too, okay? But I'm gonna put some glue right about there. I like to lick my finger when I'm using glue because when you use a glue gun, it doesn't stick to your finger if it's a little bit wet. It's a small little trick. Glue gun does not stick to wet surfaces or wet fingers. There we go, cut off the trims, just like that. And there we go. Five amazing feathers hanging down. Perfect, I love that. I love the length of them all and the colors look really good. I'm sure yours does too. We put all those to the side. And the last step, of course, what we need, just like this one, is a hanger on the top. So it's the same thing as before. We just use our string to make a little hanger. This looks like a perfect piece. So we just fold it in half like this, and we glue or tape it on the top to hold. Of course, you know, I'm gonna use glue. Woo! Very hot. Amazing. Oh my goodness, I think it's done. Here it is. Yes, my amazing dream. Oh, hey, wait a minute. My dream catch is a little bit off. I'm gonna redo my string. Oh, <laughs> mistakes happen. What do we do? We repair it. I have some tape right here. I'm gonna pull off this top string, first of all. I'm gonna cut it off. Try that again. All we wanna do is, I got a little bit of a tear. I'm just gonna put some tape on it and repair it. You would never know the difference. Now let's make sure we put the string in the right spot this time, right about there. Right there. Glue. And the new string. <laughs> like I always say, if you make a mistake, fix the mistake. If you don't wanna fix the mistake, then don't worry about it. <laughs> gonna be what it is there we go ah much better place to put my hanger and look here it is all completed although it has a little bit of glue gun strings on it I absolutely love this project dream catcher just like this is perfect for your bedroom to give away as a gift and to protect yourself from those bad dreams once in a while so wonderful I have two dream catchers now let's see how they look together Wow, I love them so much. I hope yours turned out as good as mine. And as always, great threes and fours. It's been a pleasure, and I hope you had a fun time. Can't wait to see you next week. And of course, may the Creator watch over you as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. Have a great day. See you later, guys. Oh, I got two dream catchers now. Love that. Put this one up here.